So the question is about using the ADX VMA. In Dean's case, he's using a um, Lizard Trader ADX VMA. So there's the ADX VMA from Lizard Trader Lizard Indicators. So you can just go to lizardindicators.com to get this indicator. Um, or if you have a Futures IO account, uh, you should be able to find this indicator on Futures IO as well. As I know, a lot of um, a lot of the AMA indicators um, have been posted on Futures IO as well uh, from Harry. So, okay, so the uh, let's get this indicator on here. Uh, let's make this plot a little thicker, and then we can uh, explain what the question is. So Dean would like to identify these neutral trends. Um, so you can see the ADX VMA, you know, kind of clearly identifies down downtrends, or at least it's trying to identify downtrends, you know, versus uptrends, right? And so Dean wants to use the neutral trend to block trade signals, right? So he's already has a uh, a trade signal system already set up in Bloodhound, and he wants to use the ADX VMA as a filter to block out signals, right, when the ADX VMA is in this neutral trend here, as you can see, right, when it turns gold color. All right, yeah, so we'll identify, we'll identify this neutral trend in Bloodhound and use that to allow trade signals in any direction. So that's the key is to allow trade signals in any direction. So even if we're in an uptrend, an uptrend will allow even a short signal to come through, even in an uptrend, just as long as it's not in a neutral trend. Okay, so let's get Bloodhound open for today. And uh, let's get a file name in there. So it looks like we're almost at the last, last one for the month. Okay, all right, so now that we have a file name put in here, let's get to work. All right, so I'm gonna start working on the logic board here and let's make a new logic template. Um, Let's see here. All right, so we're gonna block signals when ADX VMA is neutral. One thing to note about the ADX VMA is that this neutral isn't always flat. For the most part, right, when that indicator goes flat, it's identified, you know, that's when it kind of goes neutral, but it's not always perfectly flat, right? It'll look flat on the chart, but it's not always perfectly flat. So in that case, because when it's neutral, it's not always flat, we, we can't use the slope solver uh, because it, it doesn't always um, work, work that well. So what's best to use, so it's the solver that's best to use for the ADX VMA is gonna be the threshold solver. And, the, and using the threshold solver is gonna be unique to the AMA ADX VMA, right? So the threshold solver may not work with other ADX VMA indicators by other programmers. <clears throat> and uh, I'll, I'll sh you'll see why here in just a moment. So let's um, give this a name here. Okay, so there's a name. All right, so next step, let's go um, plug the ADX VMA here into the indicator area so let's open that up and let's go into the lizard trader indicators here and there's our ADX VMA let's add it down here so the reason why the the lizard trader or the AMA ADX VMA works with the threshold solver right the reason why we are using the threshold solver here is because of this data series Right, and it has a data series that identifies the trend. So this trend data series, it will be a negative one value when, uh, when the indicator is red or identifying a downtrend. The trend value will be zero when it's neutral or a positive one when the indicator turns blue. Right, so this is necessary. So having a data series is necessary when indicators change colors, right? Because NinjaTrader doesn't allow the color 
of a plot to be identified. <clears throat> right, so, so because of that limitation of NinjaTrader, Bloodhound cannot read the colors of an indicator. So you'll, you'll need some other kind of source to identify what is causing an indicator to change colors. And so um, Harry being a good programmer, <clears throat> he created this data series called Trend <clears throat> so that uh, other programs like Bloodhound or maybe you're writing a custom strategy can clearly and cleanly identify when the, the plot is changing colors or changing trends. So, okay, um, so we've got the trend in there. Next thing, um, you know, make sure that you're, you know, you've adjusted the period setting here, right? So whatever period you, whatever the period is you're using on your chart, make sure you have, uh, make sure you change that period setting in Bloodhound so that the chart matches what Bloodhound's using as well. All right, we'll click OK. And um, so we want to identify when it's uh, flat here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a one in there um, for a uh, positive trend. And in E, I'm going to put a negative one in there. And so what we're going to do is on the outputs, we're, we're looking for a zero value right from that data series. So remember that trend data series is going to be a it's going to be a positive one for an uptrend, and it's going to be a negative one for a downtrend. So we don't we don't want to identify the trends. We want to identify the neutral area. Um, actually, no, I'm sorry. Hold on. Uh, we're identifying the opposite here. So actually, we want to um, we do want to identify when it's in a trend. So just a sec here. So, right, so when the indicator is in an uptrend, right, so you can see when it's blue here, we're getting a long and short output, right? So, so when the indicator is in an uptrend, this long and short output will allow trade signals to get through. And we're going to do the same thing for um, a, a downtrend here, right? So remember that the, the uh, threshold value of a negative one that's for a downtrend in the indicator. So, yeah, here, let's, we'll keep an eye on this part here, right? So there's no output here from Bloodhound. But as soon as we set an output value here for the negative one value, now we will get an output <clears throat> during a, a downtrend. There, there we go. So we're in a downtrend, and we're getting an output from Bloodhound. And let's stretch this out here a little bit. And so we can see there's a, um, actually let me just adjust the colors here quickly. So this blue is a little hard to read on a black chart. So let's make it a little brighter. There we go, dodge blue. There. So we can see we had like one bar that was an uptrend, right? And so we got a, a, an output from that solver for that one bar had, that had an uptrend. And then we had a, one bar with a downtrend here. And we have an output, right? And then we had this, this long bar that was neutral and there was no output. So this is what Dean is looking for is no output when the ADX VMA is in a neutral um, position here. All right, so now, just to create a full example, right, so, so this is basically, this, this solver is, um, it's a filter, right? It's basically, it's a filter, right? And we could tell it's a filter because we're getting a long and a short output at the same time, right? So that's clearly not a trade signal, but it's a, a filter, filtering mechanism. And filters have to be used with OR nodes. I'm, I'm sorry, with AND nodes. <laughs> so we need an AND node in there. We can plug that in. And then 
basically you would take the rest of your your trade signal logic here you know whatever the output is from your trade signal logic you plug it into this AND node and what I'll do is I'll create a I'll create a little simple example here so I'm going to take an inflection solver because an inflection solver can generate a bunch of just kind of a bunch of random mock uh, signals for us here so all right, so I'll just call this, you know, our, our, our test signals. And let's change the input here to price. There we go. Okay, so there, yeah, we can see, right, basically just a bunch of random random signals there. So, you know, this makes a good, good little test signal here. So, if we plug that in, <clears throat> there we go. So we can see there's no um, signals in this neutral area of the ADX VMA. And let's take a look over here, right? Same thing over here, no signals during this neutral area of the ADX VMA. Right? So there we go. So when you're building a filter, right, you take the output of your, your uh, trade signal logic, put it into another AND node, a last, right, uh, a last AND node of your system. And then you can, and then you can plug in this filter in there, just like that. Right, so here, again, so if I disconnect it, right, we have a bunch of trade, bunch of, all right, come on, you grab this circle here. Well, yeah, I hope Ninja will fix this soon, but I cannot... Oh, there we go. I can grab it as long as I don't touch it. So, um, right, so we can see there's a bunch of trade signals in this neutral area here. And then once I plug my filter into the AND node, all the signals go away. All right. There you go, Dean.